Hi guys, I just wanted to do a quick video about um, something that's happened over the last few days after the Liverpool match. Something that I'm not really happy with and it really seems disgusting to me, but Steven Bergwijn, who unfortunately missed a couple of chances against Liverpool, but the fact that he was actually in the right place to get them is a big thing. He's been getting a lot of abuse on Instagram, some of it's disgusting racial abuse, telling him to F off out of the club and all that. I think this is just absolutely disgusting and I just wanted to do a small video here just to explain that, you know, this really can't go on. Tottenham fans shouldn't treat him like that. He's a really, really good player who's playing his heart out for the club, defending, attacking, doing everything he can. And yet he's getting all this abuse from fans. So I know it's not every fan, it's just a few fans, but, you know, the majority of fans are still supportive and we need to go back to him and let him know that and try and root out the other fans who are, you know, talking disgustingly to him. What I'm going to do in the short video is just share a couple of screenshots of the type of abuse he's been getting and then, you know, so you can see what he's been doing. But I, I would urge everybody who's got an Instagram account or a Twitter account just to go on there and give him messages of support, show him that the majority of people actually, a majority of Spurs fans actually support him and they want him to do well and they're fully behind him. Uh, and, you know, I'd like you to do that if you could and, and I'm going to do it as well. So, you know, just wanted to have a little discussion about. I'm also going to discuss a couple of other things. One of our ex-great players, Jan Vertonghen, has been talking about concussion, so we'll talk about that and maybe just talk about a few other things about Spurs before we do our post-match against uh, Leicester on Sunday. So, uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy what I'm going to do in this video. Another thing I want to talk about is um, concussion substitutes and our defender, Jan Vertonghen, has recently spoken out about this. He mentioned that in the first match of the Champions League semi-final against Ajax, he had a bad uh, injury on his nose in his head area. He was actually taken off. He tried to come back on, but couldn't carry on, so he was taken off. And he's revealed that for eight or nine months afterwards, he was feeling dizziness and headaches, etc. And he couldn't play well. And that's why eventually I think he left Tottenham and went to join Benfica because his form just dipped. Now, that is just a very high profile example of concussion and how it can happen. David Luiz of Arsenal had a concussion. Raul Jimenez had that awful cracked skull. Uh, we hope we wish him a, a speedy recovery. But based on all these little things and for lots of lobbying from the footballing authorities and the players, etc., now IFAB have agreed to have um, concussion substitutes from January. So there's two options. First, you can have one concussion substitute where the opposition team can't make a change, but you can change one of your sub, uh, players if they've had concussion, even if you've made all your subs. And the section op second option is the one that the FA are going to take on, where you can have two concussion substitutes, but the opposition can also make substitute at the same time. So this is to stop people abusing it, like saying, falling down, pretending they've got concussion when they haven't, to bring another player on. So to, to, to stop that happening, opposition teams can also bring a, another substitute on to match that. I think this is a really good thing because there's been lots of talk about dementia, Alzheimer's, head traumas, and heading the ball, and concussion etc and people have played on when they shouldn't have done really I remember a few years ago Hugo Lloris got elbow got kneed in the head against Everton I think and he carried on and there was a big hoo-ha about that but I think if you can allow concussion substitute this will really make things a lot easier and hopefully protect the players moving forward and I think it's a great great innovation to happen and it's a long time coming but a great has happened now and I'm really fully supportive of this so we'll see how this pans up it's going to start in January 2021 We'll see what happens. Hopefully there won't be any more injuries that we even need a concussion substitute. But if we do, then the, the option is there to bring somebody else on and hopefully it'll reduce the number of injuries. So, yeah, that's a good thing that's happening in football and hopefully, you know, things will really improve from there.